I'm Sherry and this is Gardening in the North. If you've enjoyed the content that I've been putting out on my videos, then please hit the subscribe button below to show me your support. Today I wanted to show you or share with you how I can my homemade sauerkraut. Now I tried to grow some cabbage this year. Every year I make sauerkraut, but this was the first year that I attempted to grow cabbage. And I thought, how hard could it be? Except that I didn't take into consideration pests. So I planted four plants and this is all I got. So it's not much. Now, when I compare it to this huge cabbage that I got at the local farmer's market, because if you can't grow it yourself, then you might as well buy locally. I was able to cut one of them up, or I shouldn't say I, my husband cut up one of them already, and I got two huge bags full. So just to show you the difference. So I am going to cut these two up, two of them here. I'm gonna cut these two up and put them into the bowl. I'm gonna get my jars, which are currently um, in the hot water bath right now. So I do two sterilizations to my, my jars. As I empty my jar, I throw them right into the dishwasher and they get sterilized the first time in the dishwasher. When they're done, I then store them in the boxes that I purchased them in upside down. The reason I do this is to limit the amount of dust or bacteria that might um, fall into those jars and, and start multiplying. Now, when I'm ready to use them, I sterilize them again. I place them back into the hot water bath and I boil them for a good five minutes. I pull them out and then I can with them. So it's really important that you make sure that you're using clean and sterilized jars. So once I get all of these cut up, I am going to place it, pack them really good into the jars and I'm using quart jars. Uh, you wanna make sure that you don't go past the neck of the jar because you don't want your cabbage touching the lid once you put the lid on. Um, I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar to each jar. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of pickling salt, but you could use whatever salt you have. I just happen to have pickling salt left from um, pickling other stuff. And then I'm gonna do one teaspoon of white wine vinegar. Now I am going to do a couple of them with apple cider vinegar because I haven't tried that yet and I thought why not try it and see if the taste is a little bit different. Then I'm going to fill the jars up with boiling water. Now you want to fill the jar up to a quarter inch from the top of the jar and once you've done that you want to use any kind of tool that you have any kind of long utensil so if you have a spoon or uh, the end of a spatula or even a butter knife and you just want to stick that into your jar make sure that you have debubbled it you want to get all those bubbles out before you put your lids on once you put your lids on you're going to throw them into your hot water bath which is going to be about an inch above each jar you want to make sure that each jar is covered once that's done you are going to put the lid on and boil them for 20 minutes at which time you will then turn your stove off and remove the lid and let them sit there for an extra five minutes before pulling them out. Once that's done, you're then going to start store those jars in your pantry for about a month. After a month's time, you can eat them. All of the cabbage has been cut up. I've actually filled a bunch of the jars. I've only filled them to the top of the neck because once you put everything in it, you don't want the cabbage touching the lid, the inside of the lid. One thing I want 
to mention is that I don't know what I was thinking when I got home. Um, I started doing this as soon as I got home from work. I haven't even changed yet. And I just started cutting the cabbage. Luckily, my husband walked in and kind of said, like, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm making sauerkraut. And he said, no. And he took over and started cutting for me. So these were the pieces that I was cutting. And then these were the pieces that <laughs> I needed to cut. Okay, so one thing that you want to make sure prior to filling your jars, you wanna make sure that they are sterilized and clean. So if you ran them through the dishwasher after you used them the last time and you were just storing them on a shelf somewhere, you're gonna to need to sterilize them. You wanna make sure that you're not using jars that potentially might have dust or bacteria growing in them prior to putting um, what you're preserving in them. So these have all been um, sterilized. They're nice and clean. I have the hot water bath ready for them to go in there. And so all I have to do now is add the hot water to them. I'm going to be adding them to the top ring of each jar. So that would be about a quarter inch from the top. Once that's done, I'm going to use the, the end of my wooden spoon and I'm just gonna stick it in a little bit to release any of the air bubbles that might be in there before I put the lid on. All of the jars have been filled with the boiling water and now we wanna remove the bubbles, any bubbles that may be in there. Now, when I do this, I can see the bubbles coming up. You just wanna make sure you do that. And then once you're done doing that, you can add a little bit more water into it. Okay, so once you have debubbled your jars, you wanna make sure that you top up the water so that it is a quarter inch from the top. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in each jar just to make sure that it's where it needs to be. Now, just to give you an idea of how much water I used for these 16 or for these 12 um, quart jars, I basically filled this. There's a little bit left in here for me to do top up, but that's about it. So you want to make sure that you have a big pot of boiled water to fill your jars with. Now, when I brought home the cabbage, we thought that maybe we would get three quarts out of each cabbage. And I can already see that we're probably going to get close to 20 from the three of them. So that should last us the entire year. We're, 
more so my husband who eats it out of the jar. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing you want to do before you put your lids on is you want to make sure that once you put your lid on that it has a good seal. So you're going to just dab a paper towel into some hot water. You're going to wipe off every single rim because you want to make sure that there isn't any leftover cabbage from your... Um, funnel you want to make sure that there isn't any of the sugar the salt the vinegar on there you don't want anything that is potentially going to cause you not to hear that magic popping and then to continue having that good seal so I'm just going to wipe them all off and that is the sound to tell us that our bacon that we're cooking for dinner is almost ready Okay, so the other thing you want to have is a wand. You want this, it's a magnetic wand for picking up lids. And so what I've done is I have filled a small bowl with hot water and all of my lids. And the reason for this is I want to make sure that the wax on every single lid warms up so that when I put it onto my jars and I put the rings on and I put it into the hot water bath, that it ensures that they have a really good seal. I'll just go ahead and start putting all of these on. Now you want to make sure that it's fairly tight. Okay. I wouldn't say, you know, strain yourself or anything, but you just want to make sure that they're on there. I'm not spinning them overly hard. So once these are done, I'm going to place these in the hot water bath. Now I'm going to put the timer on and once all of them are in there, I will start the time. Once they're all in the hot water bath and it's boiling, I will start the clock for 20 minutes. Once that 20 minutes is done, I'm going to remove the lid turn the stove off and let them all sit there for an extra five minutes. Then I'm gonna pull them out, put them onto a cutting board or a dish towel on your counter and you're just gonna let them sit there and you're gonna to start to hear that popping noise and then you know that they're, they're having that proper seal that you need. Okay. So the other thing that you're going to need is a pair of these tongs. So these tongs are going to save you from burning yourself when you put this into the hot water bath. One thing to keep in mind is that once you have placed all of your jars into the hot water bath, you wanna make sure that they are one inch below the top of the water line. And so you can see here that they haven't started, the water hasn't started boiling yet. So I won't be starting my 20 minute clock until I see that it's boiling. So we ended up getting 24 quarts of sauerkraut out of those three big cabbages that I got from the farmer's market and then the two smaller purple ones from my garden. The last eight are currently in the water bath right now. I'll be pulling those out soon. I'm gonna leave them on the counter to cool down till tomorrow and then I will be writing a date on the top of the lid so that we know when we can start opening up these jars. So when you make sauerkraut, you wanna make sure that you place them in your pantry on the shelf and leave them for a good month. So the date that I'll pick will probably be the end of November so that we know that these are gonna be really good to eat. Let me know down below in the comments on how you use your sauerkraut or whether or not you've tried this recipe and what you thought of it. Thanks for sharing time with me.